I was uh, trying to update Christine, our relationship with Center Friends. And I think the first time I came to Center Friends, I was 15 years old. I sang in Teen Ambassadors. And uh, so you have walked with us as we've gone to, as someone said, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, it, it's been a joy. And I was so honored when um, Brenda called to say, would you come and, and lead worship? And I said, OK. <laughs> I think if you know me as, as Gary's wife, um, I would prefer to just kind of be in the background. And, but that's not what the Lord has for us today. So I'm excited, but I need you to stand up, and we're going to start praise and worship of our, of our Lord God Almighty.
Does anybody have any praise of God? I praise the Lord for the word of God, which is always the truth in a day and an age, and you never can't find the truth any place else. It will always be the truth. Amen. I praise the Lord for being my savior, uh, my shepherd, my guide, my counselor, uh, my wonderful Savior, he is everything to me. And, um, you know, as I think about it, I think how unworthy I am to be before his presence. And yet he loves me so much that he came to earth to die on the cross for my sins. And how could I not stand here and worship him and praise him and thank him? Amen. I am just so thankful that from where I've been in my life on the dark side in a very dark place that God was able to come into that place and physically rescue me and pull me from that and to bring me back to light and then to bring me back to church and to use a friend of mine to bring me back to this church um, where I feel like once again, I was not saved here, but I was reborn here. So I am very thankful for God and for Center Friends Church. When I came here this morning, I felt like doing a testimony. I have been problems. I'm working out. But after singing these songs, the Holy Spirit tell me, get off my butt, give a testimony. So I'm, <laughs> that, praise God for my salvation and for Jesus Christ to... Uh, be with you all time. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for God because he connected me to this group of people. And to this church. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we adore you. We could spend eternity giving praise and not even touch the middle of all the good that you do. Lord, we are honored that we can be a body of one voice proclaiming that you are Lord and you are gracious and good. Lord, give us that undivided heart. Make us clean. Purify us. Yes. May we become worthy to be your servants yes, through the power and the grace and the the many gifts that Jesus Christ gives us. Yes, and God. praise you for your worthy. Amen. Amen. It's so easy after we've adored him to immediately see where we fall short. Confession in Daniel said, while I was speaking and praying, which was his common practice, confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and making my request to the Lord my God, while I was still in prayer, then it goes on and on. Are we in that sense of prayer of saying, God, forgive me? I, I'm falling short. I so appreciate Stefan's testimony. Of, yes, we fall short, but God is so gracious that if we confess, it's forgiven. And it's forgotten, and we can go on. Please take a moment. I'm going to be playing one of my favorite songs that I of you are my hiding place and talk to the Lord and make sure your accounts are clear with the Lord as, as we go through confession.
fear, my, my sin of not trusting, my sin of not always just going when you say go. Lord, I thank you how faithful you are. Lord, I thank you for that call you give upon each one of our lives to be a gap stander. Lord, may we be in your presence so that we are equipped to stand in the gap for those that we love, for our friends and our neighbors. Lord, help me to carry the burden that you've laid on my heart for those that need to know you. Oh God, I pray for our country. Oh Lord, I pray that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we're thankful we can come to you as we confess our sins. You are faithful and just to forgive us of all our unrighteousness so that we can follow you in Christ's name. We pray. Amen. I don't know about you, but after I have had that time of confession and getting clean, I have so much to be thankful for. Amen. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing, and that's what we've been doing. Amen. Know that the Lord is God. It's he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let's sing what a beautiful name.
for today. Something you just have to praise the Lord for. For my wife, Jennifer. I'm thankful that I'm here today. I'm able to walk and talk a lot. And I'm not caught up in the forest fires and the tornadoes and hurricanes. God's blessings are all around me. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for his wisdom, his undying love, and his compassion to us. I'm thankful for the name Jesus Christ. I used to work, I left the Christian state to go to work, and they mentioned Jesus Christ, and that got me to do my work at time. Anybody work at the factory in the house here? They got me to the factory in the morning, talking about Jesus Christ. I am so thankful for so many things of how God answers prayer that I never dreamed how he would answer it how he is so faithful to to take our pain and our hurts and our burdens and make them a beautiful thing and make them something better than I could ever ask or imagine Amen. he never wastes our pain and I guess that's what I've learned as I've walked for many decades that he doesn't waste those trials that we go to. It's for purpose, for his glory, and for us to be better connected to him. Amen. As we have, have adored him and we've confessed our shortcomings and our sins and we've given him thanks and praise, we are now ready to stand in the gap for others. As James 5, 16 says, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed because the prayers of a righteous person has great power in its effect. So let us start turning those burdens that we have, those prayer requests we've heard earlier, let's give those to the Lord.
we come before you as a people who love you and trust you and serve you. But Lord, we have a burden, a heavy burden for those in our community, for our family, our co-workers that need to know you. Lord, let us not be satisfied to just be our little family. Help us go out and search and find those that don't know you, that we have the answer for today. Lord, there's more questions than I have answers for. But Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray for our nation. If ever we needed to pray, it's now. Oh Lord, we're so turned from you. Lord, you say, if, if my people, Lord, were asking as your people to come and heal our land, come and let us call back to your name and lift your name, that you're the name that changes all things. Lord, let us, let us be busy serving you. There's so many that need your physical touch. There's so much, so many that need your mental healing. There's so many that need emotional and financial jobs, housing, just the food on the table. Lord, we take so much for granted. Forgive us. Lord, may we carry those burdens. May we stand in the gap. Oh, God, you're looking. Who's going to stand in the gap? Lord, may we be worthy to stand in the gap. We thank you again that you've called us to do that. And we're excited and feel honored to stand in the gap for others. In Jesus' name. As we have done these acts of worship, Psalm 63 says, I've seen you in the sanctuary. Have you seen him today? I've seen him. I've heard him. Amen. And I've beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. Amen. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They'll go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword. The king will rejoice in God. Are we ready to praise him and celebrate for what he's done? Amen. <coughs>
You may be seated. You know, God does everything for a reason. Amen. There's nothing that, that happens in this world that escapes his, his point of view, his ideas, and or, or just escape, escapes his notice. And I, I want to thank Carol and her daughter for coming today. Amen. And sharing with us. Because if you look at the steps that she led us through, Amen. Where did it end up at? Victory in Jesus. Amen. And the cross. Amen. And that is what the whole thing is all about. Is keeping or receiving that victory in Jesus, keeping that victory in Jesus, and sharing that victory in Jesus with everybody else. Amen. I was going to talk today about the marriage feast and where when all of the invited guests didn't show up God took his servants and he said I want you to go out into the highways and the byways and bring in any and all and in the, the verse that I had it said the good and the evil bring them in and you know, that's what God is telling us to do today. That it, you know, the scripture says that it said that he ordered his slaves. Well, I, slaves is a word that, that I have a, have a problem with. So we're supposed to be his servants. And people accept the word servant today a lot better than they do slave. Amen. It would be a big controversy. So if we are, if I am a servant to God, then I need to be bonded to God and welded to God. And what is that welding that takes place it is that, that binds us to him? It is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so if we are bonded to God through Jesus Christ, then we need to hear the Father speaking to us out into the highways and the byways and spread that gospel. Invite any and all. Doesn't matter whether they look like you. Doesn't matter if they act like you. Don't matter if they don't even smell like you. Bring them in. Because you see, God is not a respecter of person. You can be the worst axe murderer in the world, and God will forgive you. Amen. Or you can be someone who just hasn't made the decision to accept Jesus Christ in their life as their Savior. He says, I want you to. He gave, he allowed Jesus Christ to die for any and all. And that's the message that we need as his servants to get out there into the world that God loves everybody. He doesn't approve of what they do sometimes and there is a penalty to pay if we don't. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't lessen God's love for them any, any less. So, if we're bonded to God, Let's do what God has asked us to do. Let's go to the highways and the byways. Drag them in if you have to. <laughs> Tie them up and throw them over your shoulder because you're going to come to church with me. <laughs> do what is necessary. Go through the steps and see the victory in Jesus. Would you stand this morning? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I am, I am so, so enthused with the words that we have heard today. Father, we've heard good, wise words from you. We have heard good, 
music, very inspiring words through the music. And every one of us, dear Lord, should be able to leave here knowing that we've been in the presence of an almighty God. Amen. Father, bless us. I mean, the war is not in here. The war is on the outside, dear Lord, where Satan is running rampant. And that's where you need your servants the most, is on the outside of this building, sharing with people, giving them the opportunity, inviting them, bring them in, bring them in. And Father, I pray that as we leave, that all of these words will be stuck in our mind and we can't get them out so that we have to do something about it. Father, this I ask in Jesus' precious name.